Thank you. I am glad to be here to tell you about the Stanford HIV Drug Resistance Database. Here are my disclosures. And the funding for the database comes entirely from the Division of AIDS at the NIH. The Stanford HIV Drug Resistance Database has three parts, an actual database that can be queried, several sequence analysis programs, and many educational web pages. In this talk, I will describe the most widely used part of the database, the Genotypic Drug Resistance Interpretation Program. You can access the interpretation program and the pages containing supporting educational material at the upper right part of the home page. Clicking on the HIVDB program tab will take you to the most commonly used form for entering data, the one that allows clinicians to enter lists of mutations in the RT protease and or integrase genes. Laboratories and researchers performing the actual virus sequencing will use different forms that allow them to enter the raw sequence data. The mutation entry page contains three parts, the lists of drugs to be included in the report, the text boxes for entering mutations, and the, optimal, and the optional dropdown lists for entering mutations. The default list of drugs included in the report includes six NRTIs, five non-NNRTIs, three protease inhibitors, and four integrase strand transfer inhibitors, or INSTEs. The cytosine analogs, 3TC and FTC, are treated in an identical manner by the program. The same applies to the two tenofovir prodrugs, uh, TDF and TAP, although this is continuously being revisited. Cabotegravir will be added to the default list when it is FDA approved. There are three text boxes for entering mutations, one each for RT, protease, and integrase. Mutations are defined as amino acid differences from a consensus sequence. However, it is not necessary to know the consensus because as shown here, it is just necessary to enter the mutation's position followed by the amino acid or amino acids present in a patient sequence. It is not uncommon for sequence to have a mixture of two or more mutations at the same position. And when this occurs, each amino acid is listed following the position. Selecting mutations from the dropdown list is optional because most clinicians will be copying mutations from a genotypic resistance test report. If a mutation is selected using the dropdown list, it will immediately appear in the text box. The bottom part of this slide contains a sample list of entered mutations for RT, protease, and integrate race that we will be using for the following slides. This slide shows the NRTI plus NNRTI portion of the report for the sample with the mutations entered on the previous slide. It contains three sections, the interpretation section, the mutation scoring section, and the mutation comments. For each gene, the mutations are classified into three categories. For RT, these are NRTI drug resistance mutations, or DRMs, NNRTI DRMs, and other mutations. For protease and integrase, these categories are major drug resistance mutations, accessory drug resistance mutations, and other mutations. The other category is for mutations that do not contribute significantly to HIV drug resistance and are often naturally occurring variants. For each drug, there are five susceptibility levels. The clinical implications of each of these levels are described in detail in the program's release notes. For each drug class, the output contains a table showing the mutation scoring that led to the interpretation. For each drug, these tables list mutation penalties that when added together are converted into a level of reduced susceptibility. 
mutation penalties can be assigned to individual mutations as shown for the NRTI DRMs in this particular example, or to individual and combinations of mutations as shown for the INST DRMs in this example. Combination scores are particularly important for ARVs with a high genetic barrier to resistance, such as the second generation INSTEs as shown in this example. Several mutations can increase susceptibility to a drug and these receive negative scores for that drug. For example, M184I increases susceptibility to AZT and uh, tenofovir whereas K65R increases susceptibility to AZT. There are four pages containing the complete list of scores for each drug. The third part of the report for each drug class is the list of comments for each mutation. This slide shows the RTI comments and the INSTI comments for the sample we've been using so far. The comments contain data that may not be reflected in the mutation penalty scores. For example, the M184I V comment states that although these mutations cause high level 3TC and FTC resistance, they are not contraindications to the continued use of these drugs because they increase susceptibility to AZT and tenofovir and they reduce HIV-1 replication. The comments also indicate which mutations are polymorphic in that they can be observed in previously untreated persons. There are four pages containing the complete list of DRM scores for each drug class and four pages containing reviews of the DRMs for each class with cited references. Three main types of data are considered in developing the mutation penalty scores. The first is the extent to which a mutation is selected by a drug or drug class as evidenced by the prevalence of a mutation in art naive and art treated individuals. The second is the extent to which a mutation reduces susceptibility in vitro. The third is the extent to which a mutation influences the virologic response to a drug. Although one might consider this third type of data to be the most important, it is incompletely available for most mutations in drugs. Finally, expert opinion gleaned from published papers and scientific meetings also plays a role. In conclusion, a single genotype cannot be used alone to guide therapy. It is also important to know whether a person with HIV had other earlier genotypic resistance tests and whether virological failure occurred with any previous regimen, even if genotypic resistance test results uh, obtained at that time are not available. Finally, the results of genotypic resistance tests must be placed in the context of current treatment guidelines because not all possible combinations of antiretrovirals are viable options. Finally, I'd like to acknowledge the HIVDB team members who are listed here, Jonathan Shapiro, who is the director of the advisory committee for the HIV genotypic resistance test program and the NIH for funding.